Good morning, everyone. If we could have everyone take their seats. A copy of the Open Meetings Act is located on the north wall of the legislative chambers, and there is also an automatic external defibrillator available on the back wall of the legislative chambers. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, And before we get started this morning, if you all have noticed, we have a little uh, visitor with us today that we'd like to recognize. It's uh, Commissioner Morgan's uh, grandchild, Morgan. And you could all say hello to her. Hey. And how old are you, Morgan? I'm ten. ten. And where do you go to school? Christ the King, and you're in grade fifth grade. All right. Well, welcome, and we hope you enjoy our meeting. She could run for grand twenty years. Yeah, uh, ten years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, roll call, please, for the Board of Equalization. Mr. Boyle. Here. Mr. Cavanaugh. Yeah. Mr. Duda. Here. Mr. Kraft. Here. Mr. Morgan. Here. Mr. Rogers. Here. Madam Chair. Here. Item A, approval of the minutes of the Board of Equalization meeting held Tuesday, June 13, 2017. And item B, call for a meeting and set Tuesday, June 27, 2017 as a date for hearing on certified assessment corrections, reflecting the addition of omitted property to the tax rolls or increased value on property. Approval of A and B. Any questions or comments? Motion by Commissioner Judas, seconded by Commissioner Boyle. Please vote. Motion passes. Citizen comments, is there anyone in the chamber wishing to speak to the Board of Equalization about an item not on the agenda? Seeing none, we do have four resolutions, D through G. Are there any questions on any of those resolutions? If not, it, does that include adjournment? Yes. Um, is Tim here or somebody from Treasure Island? Um, he was. Yes, he's here. I, I'm just wondering, so what's the difference? Did, are you all just giving more detail? Because I was just curious what's so special about Form 453 form. You hadn't done that before, and I'm seeing it now, and I'm just, just curious. Or are you just giving more detail about what the form is? Tim Cavanaugh, Chief Deputy Treasurer. No, one is pertaining to a disabled veteran who gets relief, and another is a nonprofit. So we've had them before. The, the uh, disabled veteran might be a little more rare that you don't see every, every meeting. Okay. No, I just, you, you list the form particularly. You never, yeah. I, I don't remember you listing. Well, I have asked them to include a little more detail maybe in the uh, cover page than we okay. have before. I think that maybe is what you're talking about. Right. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank Any you. other questions or comments? Please vote. Motion passes. We'll move to the agenda for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. Roll call, please. Mr. Boyle. Yeah. Mr. Cavanaugh. Yeah. Mr. Duda. Yeah. Mr. Kraft. Yeah. Mr. Morgan. Yeah. Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Madam Chair. Here. Item A, approval of the minutes of the Board of Commissioners meeting held Tuesday, June 13, 2017. And item B, approval of claims submitted for payment process through Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. So moved for approval. There's a motion by Commissioner Morgan, seconded by Commissioner Boyle. Any questions or comments? Please vote. <laughs> motion passes. Next is the consent agenda, items A through I. Is there a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. Oh, there we go. 
Motion passes. Next is a recognition of um, Vicki Palm, Palm from uh, the County Engineers, uh, no, County uh, Communications Department on her retirement and dedicated service for 19 years. And um, my understanding is she's not here today, but we do wish her well on her retirement. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Commissioner Rogers made the motion. Commissioner Duda seconded. Please vote. Mr. Morgan. Motion passes. Citizen comments. Is there anyone in the chamber wishing to speak to the Board of Commissioners about an item not on the agenda? Seeing none, we will move to public hearing. Um, the first public hearing is a resolution granting mm -hmm. approval within the meaning of Section 147 of the Internal Revenue Code, um, limited partnership with bonds and interest there and shall be payable solely for the loan payments made by the borrower. And this comes, Togger Swanson, Bond Council with Kutak Rock is here. Um, this is for a $12 million uh, bond for a multi-family senior housing facility to be known as Sorensen Senior Residence located in um, Omaha, Nebraska by Swords and Senior Residents Limited Partnership. Is there anyone here during the public hearing wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. What's the will of the board? Second. Motion by Commissioner Boyle, seconded by Commissioner Morgan. Please vote. Motion passes. Item B is our Douglas County one and six year highway improvement program for fiscal year 18, nine, uh, 23 uh, and county engineer rep, uh, Dan Kudelak. Hi. Yes, good morning commissioners. Dan Kudelak, Douglas County engineer's office. Uh, Tom Doyle was unable to attend, so I'm gonna try to fill in those big shoes for him this morning. <laughs> As you know, we are obligated by law to present uh, to the board classifications and standards, a one and six year plan. Uh, a little bit of history on that. That's interesting. Back in the mid 60s, committee was formed by the uh, legislature to uh, put together a uh, formal plan to attempt to organize all the counties, municipalities in the state of Nebraska in at least one time a year to present a uh, formalized plan that had uh, transparency in public hearings, those types of things. and. Uh, organize uh, statewide our uh, transportation needs because they are of such importance to all the communities. So in the mid-60s, the law was passed and what they came up with was the uh, one and six year plan. Uh, again, we have a very aggressive plan. I say that to you every year, but it's the truth. Uh, we're attempting to keep up with all of the development again that's starting to show up in uh, county jurisdiction. Uh, I'll uh, limit this to about three major items, maybe four. Uh, bridges. You've read a lot about bridges in uh, the press and the uh, condition of bridges nationally is an embarrassment to uh, a lot of different communities. We in Douglas County, however, have been quite aggressive with our bridges, so we are in excellent shape. Uh, I can honestly tell you compared to other counties, particularly here in the state of Nebraska and certainly nationally. However, we do have some bridges that were constructed back in the uh, 20s, 30s, old trusses primarily that have been uh, on uh, low volume roads so uh, they don't see salt, things of that nature, and, uh, but they are getting older. We have about 12 what they call structurally deficient functionally obsolete structures left in Douglas County. And in this one and six year plan, uh, we have all of those addressed one way or another to correct them over the next hopefully six years. So we'll be clear of any of those types of structures uh, quite soon. I'll just mention a couple bridges that we're hoping to get to maybe yet this construction season. 
Uh, there are four bridges out in the valley area. Um, up here, 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 and here. This will be a bridge replaced by another bridge. The other three will be a bridge replaced by box culverts. We're in the process of buying the right-of-way currently, and we hope to let contracts on uh, hopefully all of those structures uh, yet this fall. A lot of that type of work can be done in the fall and winter, and uh, so uh, th that's our plan is to replace those four uh, and then continue this process for the next few years and get rid of all of our uh, deficient and functionally uh, structurally obsolete. Th they, by the way, are safe bridges. You know, we inspect our bridges uh, biannually and uh, uh, make sure that they can carry the uh, proper loads and uh, if need be we post the bridges so they're not in danger of falling in and uh, they're just old bridges uh, kind of like me kind of need to be boosted up once in a while. <laughs> 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 we're also uh, I think currently have about 14 or 15 sanitary improvement districts we're entering into interlocal agreements with in an attempt to uh, keep the great uh, roads up to modern standards and safeties. Uh, the county uh, aggressively participates as best we can with these SIDs. We, we have that arrangement with the developers and uh, uh, it seems to work out. You know, they pay the bulk of the cost, but we feel there is a public benefit when you uh, improve roadways uh, other than just for that one particular development. I'll mention a, a few of them. Uh, Ida Street Bridge, by the way, that dam site 15A. Um, let's see, where is it? Right, right, right in this area, I believe it is. And it's done. The bridge is actually completed. They will be working on the roads approaching that bridge. Um, should be completed this fall. However, we have another developer that's shown up, which is going to require us to do some road work right to the east of that bridge. So we will likely keep that road closed until we get all of that work done uh, to the east of that bridge. Uh, so Ida Street will probably be closed uh, yet this year, another year, and uh, uh, hopefully open next spring, early next spring. Uh, but it's moving along quite quickly, that dam site. I think they'll start filling up the lake here pretty soon. 192nd Street, north of Maple. It is hard for me to see where these are on this, this, this map right here. It is underway. It's out by Indian Creek, Indian Point. Uh, we have a good contractor on that job. We've had some dust complaints. Maybe you've received some of them. It's been dry and dusty. We've told the contractor to keep watering the road as they're moving dirt. It's a big dirt project. And that will uh, allow 192nd Street to be connected up to Fort Street, or excuse me, yes, Fort Street, uh, which it is not today. So that will hopefully increase the options that the public will have to go north and south in that part of Douglas County. We have a big project out on West F Street here. There's four, four new subdivisions out on F Street west of 204th. And there's a school, Elkhorn, uh, I think it's an elementary school that's being built as we speak. Uh, school opens in 2018. Uh, we're totally removing and replacing F Street with a uh, modern uh, concrete curb and gutter uh, road system, uh, which will handle that traffic for uh, many, many decades. And so uh, it's a big project, and uh, it should start this fall. In 2017, uh, we're buying right away, and um, developers are uh, anxious to get that road improved so they can have their uh, house sales move along quickly, hopefully. Uh, we are also working with the Bennington School District on 168th Street, just south of Bennington, and there's a new middle school going to be built just south of the high school, and uh, that will be opening this fall. And so we have 
a horse race to the barn, as they say, to try to get the road done in time for the school opening, which of course is now August 13th. You know, the schools are starting a lot earlier than when I went to yeah. school. So uh, uh, we think we can get it done, at least get them into their school, uh, but there could be a little uh, construction work still going on in that location. Some of the larger urban projects you might, uh, the public might find interesting too that, are, that we're involved with. Uh, Harrison Street, between 144th and 156th Street. Sarpy County is actually the lead agent. Douglas County has been involved with the design and the right-of-way acquisition. The City of Omaha has now annexed us out of the project, basically. We have no longer any frontage along Harrison Street in that location. But we're committed and had signed an agreement to take care of the right-of-way and, and uh, the design. I'm told they'll start on that this fall. Uh, they're going to start building walls, noise walls, retaining walls, do some storm sewer work. Uh, a lot of utilities are involved. You know, big, big utility lines have to be relocated overhead, underground. Big project. It's going to go on. In order to try to keep traffic open for the most part, I'm told, that project could go on for at least three years. So it's going to be quite a congested area, but they're attempting to uh, accommodate the schools primarily in that area. There's quite a few schools and uh, businesses and that type of thing. So we'll see how that goes. 144th Street in Boys Town area, I'm sure you've heard about that big project between Dodge and basically Center Street. Douglas County is still uh, responsible for the portion of 144th between uh, basically Pacific and Dodge. It's actually the north property line of uh, Miller North High School, which was annexed into the city years ago. They're going to be adding a third lane, so there'll be three lanes in both directions when it's done. There's two today, four lane divided. It'll be a six lane divided road. Uh, I'm told they're going to start in the city's portions, uh, Pacific South. That's where the uh, um, office park will be built for that Berkshire Hathaway company and so that's a priority of course and um, they tell us there'll be some activity this fall on that portion of the road. Pacific Street is also included which is in the city now uh, you know south of the school uh, there's going to be some modifications to access to Miller North High School and to the new development uh, I think it's called the farm uh, west. So large project. Ultimately they're going to redo the interchange on Dodge Street at 150th and Dodge to accommodate traffic into this large development and multi-use complex. But um, surprisingly the county has no funding in this project. It's all being picked up by the uh, investors. So that was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Oh, uh, 180th Street, uh, our biggest project in my career anyway at the county, I guess I'll say it's still chugging along. We're in our 12th year. Um, environmental study has been approved. It's uh, right here. We are now working on the final design. Uh, we're working with the railroad for railroad agreements. We're working with the Corps of Engineers for 404 permits very time-consuming steps in the process, but we've had a lot of communication with those two entities and uh, we feel confident that that'll move in a timely manner. We'll be buying right away in 20, let me think here, 2018, and a construction letting is scheduled currently for the fall of 2019. So it's still out, but uh, we're we see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's a major improvement that is needed in that part of the county. Um, coincidentally and interestingly, you can see on our map, 168th Street, north and south of Blondo, 156th Street, north and south of Blondo. The city of Omaha is the lead agent on 168th Street. North of Blondo is in Douglas County. And we're going to use ASEP funds, uh, Arterial Street Improvement Program funding, 
uh, to pay for that project. And the reason being that's local money, and with local money you can speed up the construction process by many, many, many years. 156th Street is a federal aid project. It's been languishing for about 10 years also. Uh, but it is coming up. They, they feel that could start in 2019. So our job will be in earnest in 2020, 2021, 2022, and that type of thing. But 180th Street is a, obviously a low volume road because it doesn't cut through. Uh, we want to get Londo Street open quickly, hopefully by, say, 2021. This will be done in 2018. They want to build it all in one year, by the way. That's the plan right now, to build it. It's a huge job, $18 million job, I believe, at least. Mm -hmm. They're buying the right of way. They hope to get it done before 156th Street and 180th Street kick in to allow people uh, detours and accesses. So keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> a lot has to happen, but it sounds promising because that's a local project and the city is putting our highest priority on that project, And uh, but we're involved because part of it's in Douglas County. Lastly, just want to mention we are also aggressively doing what we call maintenance uh, uh, projects on our county roads. Uh, 17 miles of asphalt overlay, 18 miles of uh, what we call armor coating, and 14 miles of what we call microsurfacing. So maybe if you're driven around the county, you certainly have run into that. It's all over the place. So uh, we have good contractors. They're expediting the work as quickly as possible. They're trying to contact all the adjoining properties that are directly affected and giving them uh, options of either leaving the house for the afternoon or morning while they're doing their work or stay home, you know, that type of thing. But anyway, uh, I think if you add all this work up, it's $25 million at least, if not more, uh, of which the county share is, you know, maybe 10 or 12 million of that. But uh, anyway, it's very aggressive, I'm trying to keep up with uh, the booming economy here in Douglas County and Omaha. And with that, I'll close my presentation and be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, uh, Commissioner Guy. Boyle. Uh, I do have some questions. I, when I got this report, I jumped in the car and I drove out to 60th Street, and I, I couldn't see any of this work. But anyway, so I came back and discovered that it was a little bit west of 60th. So anyway. <laughs> oh, you're not even making it out to 72nd? No, not 72nd anymore. It's back to 60th. No, I, I uh, seriously, I am I have always been impressed with uh, the work of uh, Tom Doyle and uh, you, Dan. It is uh, just really orderly, it seems, on the surface. I'm sure I can't imagine how you put these things together in such terrific fashion, working with schools and SIDs and all the political subdivisions you do. So uh, you're one cool negotiator, and I think you're doing a great job. Just want to say that at the outset. I have no criticism, just questions. Uh, I'm curious, uh, and I do appreciate all these forms and anything. A lot of these are matches um, uh, with the federal government and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and usually ours is, uh, what is ours, around 20% or so, or sometimes it's 100% just based on what's well, going on? Yeah, it's 20% local, 80% federal on the, on the big federal aid project, yes. Okay. And um, uh, I wanted to ask, do we, are we, do we have any of that relationship with the city? Uh, we do have some, don't we? You mentioned that one that's... Of course, they're doing theirs, and we're doing ours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We are and have been working with the city through interlocal agreements continuously because yeah. they're right on the fringe now. You know, a lot of the city streets yeah. are fringing on our jurisdiction, so we enter into what we call interlocal agreements with the city, and they pay their fair proportional share, and we pay ours, and we negotiate that. And it's usually just kind of predicated on how much lineal footage is in one or other jurisdiction. And you're talking with the city. Are you uh, legally able to come inside city limits after once the city is annexed? Are you uh, legally able to come in and use uh, your funds inside the city limits? I think we are legally able to do that, but uh, policy-wise, we haven't. Uh, we've done, say, like overlays. Uh, we'll we'll trade with the city if it makes sense for us to overlay a road inside the city limits. We'll do it, and they in turn will 
come back on, on their projects and overlay into the county uh, with their project right. so that we don't have contractors stumbling over each other, basically. Well, I think my real question is, uh, are you, would you be able to come in and say, uh, resurface uh, 30th Street from uh, Dodge to uh, Miller Park? You know, I, if you read the state law, it, you know, our money is, uh, you know, gasoline tax primarily sure. and motor vehicle registrations. It states in the leg legislature, I believe, that it should be spent on the county road system. And we have a map that we keep current that shows everybody what the county road system is. So I'd have to defer that to the county attorney, but sure. there could be some issues uh, yeah. with that legally, but I, and we've I, never done it, I guess is what I'm saying. And I'm not trying to turn everything on an ear because you've got lots of projects and mm -hmm. lots of commitments and that you have to keep and, and they're very important projects. But I think in light of what's uh, uh, what was a pretty heated discussion about uh, street conditions, uh, in Omaha, Douglas County, um, that maybe it uh, just something would be interesting to explore and get an answer whether there could be participation at some time uh, with Douglas with the Douglas County Engineer's Office. I wanted to ask you too: Have there been any are there any controversial uh, problems with uh, outside of that dam site uh, with eminent domain or any of those things? So that is that is that going to enter into any of these projects that you can? It can. You know, that's a last resort. Right. Um, Trying to think of the last eminent domain we've had. It's been a while. We, yeah. we, we don't do many of them. Okay. You know, it's very unusual. It's uh, normally settled. You know, we usually negotiate a settlement okay. uh, before it comes to that. Do you do? I noticed that all these forms, and they're really, really great. They're easily read by even by a layman like me. Uh, but <laughs> I'm curious, and I don't know if I see this. I didn't seem to see anything about traffic counts. Uh, and the reason I ask that is that it seems like if some as a layman again, and I'd ask your professional opinion. Uh, if we did traffic counts, would it indicate that maybe bridges should be closed instead of, I mean, totally closed instead of uh, mm -hmm. being rebuilt in any form? Do you do those? Oh, yes. Uh, we're counting traffic continuously. We funnel all of our counts into Metropolitan Area Planning Association, and uh, their maps, if you yep. have access to them, reflect our counts. Uh, in the city of Omaha counts, the state of Nebraska counts. So that's the best source, okay. one source to look at traffic counts. Um, no, we haven't uh, uh, pursued bridge closings. Um, yeah. And very infrequent. The only one I can even think of that was considered was decades ago was on Bob Boozer Boulevard. And that bridge fell in literally between Pacific and Center. Oh, yeah. And Lou Lamberty was the county engineer, actually. That was Lou's and fault, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, I guess joking. he, he, he uh, put up a, uh, a concept about closing the road. Well, guess what? There was a lot of pushback on yeah. it. Uh, the, right. the commercial property down the, the Miller Brothers, uh, sure. I'm sure some of you knew them. They were not uh, interested in entertaining that at all. So right. we replaced that bridge. Well, before Commissioner Duda brings it up, I know many times uh, bridges are used uh, very, uh, it could be minimally, but very importantly by farm vehicles that are crossing, getting to fields mm -hmm. and so forth. So I'm not suggesting that, just curious. And I want to close by saying uh, uh, how much I personally appreciate um, your professional presentation and the long history of that from your mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. You have a, uh, we never hear any, uh, any complaints about how you're working with other MAPA, whoever it may be. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're just doing a terrific job, and I personally appreciate it. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Commissioner Morgan. Dan, as Commissioner Boyle said, the surveyor's office does an excellent job, and uh, I wasn't going to say anything, but uh, I have to tell you that you made a nice, nice presentation. You emulate a young man by the name of Bill Green as you oh. made this presentation. <laughs> And you can pass that on to him. I will. Uh, Thank you. You take care. We Thank appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Thank you, Dan. I do have just one comment. The um, old Lincoln Highway project. Um, now that President Trump has um, gotten rid of the U.S. Waters um, executive order, that hel is helping move we, that along, or you know, uh, yes answer your question that it would be a tremendous help matter of fact uh, 
you know, the project was languishing for years, and um, there was a um, town hall meeting that was held, which I attended, and uh, there was a, a re representative from the federal government there, and I told him this story of uh, our 180th Street project. It, it was 10 years, a couple years ago. And, I, and, I, and people are, of course, asking the federal government for money. We want money, we want money. I said, I don't want any money from you. I just want to get the project let because in this delay of this project, conservatively, it's cost the public $10 million just in inflation. It's probably more than that, actually. And nothing's changed. It's the same project. It's just the delays to get the process done. Well, it wasn't within two weeks that the local federal highway uh, representatives in Lincoln called a meeting. And we started moving the project. Things happened. So I think, um, I'm sure, that that uh, assistant director of the federal highway department made a phone call, and that makes a difference. Yeah. So with Trump's support of uh, deregulate or not, or, or rolling in some of the regulations, making them more common sense. That can do nothing but help in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. No, that Absolutely. that was a real interesting one because um, Senator Fisher held that public hearing mm -hmm. that time that um, you all helped prepare the information for, and it was mind-boggling to a lot of people because everybody looked at it as more um, of a rural issue. Um, on roads than an urban issue on mm -hmm. roads, and ours just kind of stuck out there like a sore thumb. So I'm glad to see it moving along, moving yes, along now. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, no other questions? Thank you very much, Dan. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone else wishing to speak during the public hearing on this item? Seeing none, what is the will of the board? Uh, Madam Chair, we need to close the... Oh, I closed the public hearing. Sorry, thanks. <laughs> I'm going to close the public hearing. Is there a motion to approve? Second. Motion by Commissioner Boyle, seconded by Commissioner Morgan. Please vote. Motion passes. Next public hearing is a farmstead lot split application for a preliminary plot for Fritz Ackerland and Ellen M. Ackerland um, Ganela? Ganela? Farmstead lot split preliminary plat of proposed lot one of Ackerland Acres, one lot subdivision in the east one half, south one fourth section, 10 township, 16 north range, 9th east of 6 p.m. Address is 11750 North 300 Street. Um, and we have Doug here to tell us about the planning board. And yes, good morning, commissioners. Thank you. Uh, Doug Cook, you're a Douglas County planner. So this first item, as the chairman mentioned, is a farmstead lot split. The intent is to split off about a five-acre tract that contains a house, some accessory buildings, and a grain bin, and to separate that five acres from the remainder the parent parcel is 76 acres. So you'll see here the criteria that must be met to do a farmstead lot split. This application meets all of those criteria. So where are we? As the chairman mentioned, 11750 North 300 Street. It's, um, there it is right there. Here's the house. Here's a detached garage, a barn, a grain bin, and the location of some former grain bins. So. They're creating a, a lot that encompasses all those. You'll see it's at the corner of 300th and Bennington Road. A couple of notes on the plot then. Uh, per the engineer's office requirement, they are dedicating 50 feet <coughs> along 300th Street and 50 feet along Bennington Road. That is not considered part of the lot. That is, uh, becomes county right of way property. Here are some pictures, and this, I gotta tell you, this is a very interesting lot because it has this stucco um, rock fence around it, and it's just, needs some work, but it's a stately old residence there. Um, there are just some pictures of the site. The Planning Commission recommended approval on a six to nothing vote, and we will ask you, con and ask that you concur with that recommendation. This is the public hearing. Are there any questions or comments? I'll close the public hearing. What's the will of the board? Second. Motion by Commissioner Dew, second by Commissioner Kraft. Please vote. Hmm. Commissioner 
Morgan, Boyle, and Rogers. I can't get mine to respond. <clears throat> Voting yes, Commissioner Boyle? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Next is item D, and this is the final plat for the uh, same property that we're talking about. So, Doug, do you want to add anything? No additional comments, Madam Chair. Okay. Is there anyone here wishing to speak during this public hearing? I'll close the public hearing. What's the will of the board? Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Kraft, seconded by Commissioner Morgan. Please vote. Motion passes. The next public hearing is um, on the same property, but it is a rezoning request from ag to residential, rural residential with individual services. And um, this was also taken up at the planning board. Yes, recommended unanimous approval. Um, the zoning map is on your screen. You can see the 76 acre property highlighted. Here is the five acre tract that's separated out. Because the property that we're creating is less than 20 acres, it needs to be rezoned from ag to RR2. That's the intent. You'll see there is other RR2 property in the area. Commission recommended unanimous approval and ask you concur with that recommendation. Is there anyone here wishing to speak on this rezoning application during the public hearing? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. What's the will of the board? Move for approval. Motion by Commissioner Morgan, second by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. I'm trying to vote yes again. Okay. Commissioner Cavanaugh. Motion passes. Okay, thank you, Des. Yes, Madam Chair and Commissioners, just one quick thing. Uh, since the last time I was here, a very exciting thing has happened professionally in the world of sports, but also locally in the world of sports, and that is um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, so I'm obviously a Pittsburgh Penguin fan. They managed to win the Stanley Cup, but more importantly, as a resident of Nebraska, there are two former UNO Maverick hockey players right. on the Stanley Cup winning team, and that would be Jake Gensel, a forward who made quite a name for himself, scoring some awesome goals, and also Josh Archibald, a defenseman. So I don't know what the connection is between the UNO Mavs and the Pittsburgh Penguins, but as a Penguin fan, I'm loving it. <laughs> as a UNO fan, a hockey season ticket holder, I'm loving it. So I can't imagine how excited those two young men must be oh. to have their names etched on the most famous trophy in all of sports. Absolutely. I mean, that is... Just awesome. So sorry to throw that out oh, there. Oh, thank you. Great Great you brought that up. We like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> a couple more, a couple more points for you. Uh, <laughs> we'll move on to the committees. The first being the finance, and the, the first is the budget report as presented. Um, if there are no questions or comments on that. We'll move into the 2017-18 budget discussion and do either of the co-chairs of the finance committee want to say anything? Otherwise, we can turn it over to Joe. Yeah, I think. Uh, go ahead and turn it over to Joe, and we did have a good meeting, and I know he wants to say a few words, Doug, uh, Kagan, and Jeff, at some point. But Joe, go right ahead. Yep. And I want to thank Joe for the good job that he's uh, done for us over the past almost uh, seven years now. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, so today what we want to do is just take uh, uh, all the commissioners through uh, a budget update where we are as we begin to uh, move on to the uh, approval process for the budget. So uh, Dan's just handed out the presentation and Karen's going to help me uh, with the uh, charts as we go through them. So if you go to the first page, uh, the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of clarify again for everyone uh, the timeline of the budget process that we're working on right now. Uh, today in this finance committee, uh, we're going to go through uh, the budget in, a, in kind of a high level of uh, detail and uh, with the goal of, uh, with the uh, 
co-chairs of the committee uh, wanting to present to the rest of the commissioners how, what the budget looks like as uh, and try and reach agreement on the proposed budget that we're going to then the next step would be on the week of June 26th we would publish uh, a public notice of uh, the summary a, a template provided by the state and have a public budget and notice of the public budget hearing so that would run in the daily record and like I say it's a it's a pretty large detailed template uh, that provides a lot of information on an apartmental basis uh, for the proposed budget uh, and then based uh, that would call for a public hearing on uh, Tuesday July 11th uh, where anyone from the public would have the chance to come in and discuss the budget uh, any concerns or other ideas they might have and uh, assuming that that goes well we would be able to uh, approve the budget on that day assuming there are no decreases to any of the elected officials budget by statute that's when uh, you can increase a budget at the public hearing but if you decrease uh, an elected officials budget then you have to go back and republish and uh, have another <coughs> hearing before it can be approved so that's kind of the process that we're looking at over the next several weeks to bring uh, the budget forward. So with that said, the next uh, page is just a, a summary of the 1718 proposed budget. Uh, I think the headline is that this budget assumes no increase in the tax levy on assessed property values. So. Uh, the, the levy that's been in place for uh, I think at least the last three years would remain uh, constant for, for next year. Um, in putting together the assumptions on revenue, this uh, budget assumes a 3% increase in total county assessed property values. Um, you know, this actually was probably the area that had the most discussion over the past uh, couple months uh, regarding the budget as an initially the first proposal that came out of the county assessor's office was a 8% increase in total property tax values and I think as we're all aware uh, there was a lot of discussion about that and uh, so in the final budget that the uh, uh, for values that the uh, count, uh, county assessor turned into the state and was approved by the state it called for a 3.15 percent increase in total assessed values for the county you know given the Board of uh, Equalization protest we're assuming that that 3.15 percent uh, we're assuming that that would be about three percent at the end of the day so that's what we increase use for an increase in uh, property tax revenues which is you know considerably different in uh, its implications and uh, the original 8% would have been there's really at 3% there really is no windfall and uh, really led to us coming to the decision that uh, the um, tax levy should remain constant but in terms of the budget itself the budget is uh, proposed budget is approximately 382 million dollars which is 8.4 million or 2.2 percent below last year the decrease is really driven by about a 15 million dollar decline in road and bridge spending as the uh, county engineers office kind of looked back and said well we got a lot going on let's really just put in the budget those projects that we think will actually uh, be worked on and spent against in the upcoming year so that's really what drove that uh, in terms of the general fund budget it's a little over 199 million which is 6.4 million or 3.3 percent above last year and that uh, increase was driven by uh, greater volumes in the criminal justice system uh, you know the next chart we'll go into it a little bit more but uh, within the county that's really the area that's seeing a, a considerable increase in caseload and volume be it the public defender the county attorney the sheriff corrections uh, there's just a, a significant uptick in volume uh, that's coming through the criminal justice system 
And with that uptick in volume, it also is driving uh, an increase in cost. Uh, and the other factor that really accounted for uh, the increase in the uh, general fund budget was uh, higher employee health care costs. And that is really something that is not unique to Douglas County, but is something that uh, the whole uh, employee, uh, employer, uh, health care insurance uh, system has been trying to deal with over the past several years and is continuing. Uh, so at the, uh, the final number would be the proposed budget for operation supported property tax, which is 5.1 million or 1.8 percent above last year. So that's kind of like I say, the uh, key headlines from uh, the proposed budget. So if you go to the next page, uh, these are the areas that had uh, expense budget requests in excess of the target. And uh, the four groups there, you can see the county attorney, the public defender, the sheriff, and 911 communications all came in uh, and had uh, presentations made to the finance committee during Tuesday meetings here in this chamber and gave their rationale uh, for the expenses. I think uh, the commissioners all felt that they understood the rationale that these are uh, key functions for the county and that in order to really support the criminal justice infrastructure uh, that these spending requests were merited. Uh, and then the other uh, area that had uh, an increase above the target, as I discussed, was employee fringe benefits. Uh, so if you look at all these requests over target, uh, it summed up to about $1.3 uh, million. And then if you go to the next page, we can go to the uh, summary of the budget calculation. And with the top line is basically our revenue projections, including uh, tax revenues, uh, department fees, and all sources of revenue for the county. Then the second line are uh, the summary of total expense budgets for the county. And the third line is the uh, deficit surplus. So uh, this year, we, uh, as we put together this budget, uh, we went through and made some reductions. And what we came back feeling most comfortable with is the current budget has a deficit of a little over $800,000. But in terms of close to a, a $400 million uh, budget, that $800,000 is uh, less than one half of 1%. And uh, to be honest with you, it, these are a budget forecast. We're not that exact. So we feel that's within our margin of error. Last year, we had a, 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 a similar number was $1.2 million deficit. And the way the budget's looking here with about uh, 10 days to go, it looks like uh, there will be uh, uh, some slight revenue uh, gains and also some, uh, we're not going to spend all the money so that this year the budget should be uh, uh, just slightly above break even by the looks of it. And the assumption is that, uh, you know, the, the $800,000 that we're short right now could be covered by that same sort of uh, favorable estimates at the end of the day. So the recommendation is to, to go ahead with this budget with these numbers. Uh, uh, accept this proposal and put this budget out for the public hearing uh, on July 11th. And with that, I will take any questions about anything in the budget. Commissioner Morgan. Well, Joe, again, thank you for your work for all of us, especially Commissioner Boyle and myself, in putting this together. And I just make a note that where we, if we could have reduced uh, the mill levy. It would have been uh, if we had not had these increases in the public safety area uh, with the county attorney, public defender, sheriff, 911. And as we heard all of us at this meeting uh, from these people, you know, their caseload because of the increase in crime and so on, uh, that was the need for uh, 
those increases in their budget. And of course, then employee fringe benefits, 4.1% uh, increase there, which all of us are aware of uh, those continual increases. So I thank you uh, very much for your effort and all of the commissioners for their comments and questions too. Commissioner Boyle. Uh, I'd like to echo what Commissioner uh, Morgan said. I, I think it was um, uh, a really a thorough, complete look at our spending. and. Um, uh, I, I went through quite a few of the budgets that uh, were uh, approved and tried to find some place, uh, you know, to pull something out. And about the best I could get was spending less money on toner and copy machines and things like that. It's a tight budget and one that is realistic. Uh, something that continues to concern me, though, <coughs> is the uh, cost, the growing cost of our uh, justice system, the criminal justice system. Uh, with now we have another courtroom coming uh, for uh, the juvenile court. Uh, we have uh, uh, other responsibilities to workers' comp court, uh, district court, county court. Uh, each of them have their own administrators and all the rest of it, uh, and they need them uh, to keep the things flowing. And so we have these costs that keep coming down from the state. Um, and one that is most, most bothersome to me is that, uh, and people don't, don't know this generally, is that when the county attorney files a, a first degree murder charge uh, against uh, one of the 40 some people that are now being held in Douglas County Corrections at county taxpayer expense, um, he has to pay a filing fee. And he actually had the budget for that uh, passed half a million dollars uh, several years ago. And so uh, whenever we, he, ha he files a fee, he has to pay to the clerk of the district court uh, a filing fee to bring those charges, which is to me almost an insult. Uh, but uh, nothing's going to change because uh, a big portion of that goes to judges' retirement. So believe me, if there's ever anything set in concrete, with all due respect, it's that contribution to the retirement system. But it does alarm me because I think, uh, I don't know if Joe can answer this or if it's a fair question, but uh, I wonder um, what are, uh, of all the, of a dollar that we take in in property tax dollars, how much of that is going to the criminal justice system. And I, I would venture a guess it's approaching 60 cents out of every dollar. Higher than that, okay. So that, that's an area that we need cooperation from the state. Uh, I've, uh, when former Governor Heinemann uh, was governor, I always relished in the fact that I would stand in the back of the room and he would ask for questions and I'd raise my hand and he'd go, Mike. And so <laughs> I would say, we need help take over part of the criminal justice system, at least, you know, give us some relief. And my God, the place with 400 county officials would erupt in applause because it's affecting counties all across the state and some of whom, some of these counties, uh, with their emphasis on rural uh, uh, responsibilities. I mean, really, gravel, maintaining roads, and all these sorts of things are critically important to rural areas, which we don't even appreciate or understand, I guess. But, um, uh, I have a lot of empathy for them and I've testified on their behalf because there was a county uh, a few years ago that had a couple of, uh, of uh, murders going on, very serious ones, and of course Madison County had that bank robbery with five people. And we ended up with uh, uh, the state had to step in and pay for it uh, because they didn't have the budget. And I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have a problem with that. But um, you know, we do contribute heavily, uh, probably do sponsor um, a uh, public defender system that really until recently wasn't even used in Douglas County. When a person, when the filing fees and so forth are taken, all this sort of stuff, there's money taken out of the filing fees and other uh, sources of revenue and sent to Lincoln. Originally it was intended to help rural counties with public defenders and it's primarily turned into a, uh, with all due respect to my friends in Lincoln, kind of a bailout Lincoln uh, piece of legislation. So uh, we've got some things that we need to try to talk to our state senators about, there are some real fair ways that we can readjust these costs so that this is not bleeding or causing such a tremendous expense to the taxpayers of Douglas County. And I, uh, I also am very uh, pleased about the work uh, with Commissioner Morgan. It's great to work with him and uh, he has a real good numbers mind. When things pop up, I don't even bother getting my calculator out. I just watch him <laughs> and he comes up with all these great figures. And of course, uh, Joe, I think, did a terrific job too. It was, uh, uh, it's very difficult, particularly with the fluid 
valuation message i think you did a terrific job and i think this is a budget that will be able to live with and that functions very well for the taxpayers it's fair thank you mr cavanaugh thank you i just like to commend the co chairs commissioner boyle mr morgan for all their hard work they put in a lot of time and effort on this and i know that it's not easy having sat through them myself um and thanks joe for the uh concise uh briefing document i i look forward to uh the uh the entire department by department uh <clears throat> document to uh go through uh for my own edification and i believe we have or will be able to have it posted on our website the clerk's website is that correct mr clerk uh, Dan Ash, Douglas County Clerk. Yeah, Joe gave me a document that we put on the on the website, and it's got the uh, I guess requested budgets, if you will, from or at least the document that each department was asked to fill out to provide back to the uh, Budget and Finance Director. So that is on the DouglasCountyClerk.org. That's currently available to the public. Is yes. That right? Yes. Great. Thanks. Um, so that you know we can have. A, fully transparent budget process I think that it's important that uh, people have it I indicated I think uh, a week or so ago that <coughs> we might want to blend the uh, process that we've used in the past with the um, the current uh, kind of abbreviated process to give us a, a, a little more in terms of actual public hearing and I know that from my discussions with uh, Doug Kagan and folks at uh, Taxpayers for Freedom uh, uh, group would like to have um, a little more opportunity to sit through it. I, I think that with social media, it would be much more um, user friendly for people to go online and watch those uh, hearings from the comfort of their own homes. But that said, uh, I want to commend you guys for job well done. Really, uh, it's uh, not easy, and um, it's I actually I think kind of a a bit of a good news budget in terms of uh, we're balancing things and revenues seem to be adequate. I I hope that we can maybe uh, revisit the uh, revenue question again before we set the mill levy. Uh, it's always good to to look at that um, on an annual basis. Um, but with revenues up uh, and expenses, you know, pretty stable, with a couple of exceptions beyond our control, I guess is as Commissioner Boyle has pointed out and Commissioner Morgan there are just some things that we have to do uh, and uh, that said um, it's it's always a, a tough job to uh, to balance the the needs of the county uh, with the available resources and um, I, I think that you know working together uh, we can do that um, and keeping an eye at all times on the fact that uh, we don't want to tax people any more than absolutely necessary to perform the uh, necessary functions of government. So thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And Joe, thank you. I uh, look forward to the discussion on uh, July 11th. No other questions or comments um, from the public are there? Sure, yeah. <coughs> Hi, Jeff. Good morning. Good morning, commissioners. And uh, Jeff Stevens, 14518 Webster Circle. Uh, NTF volunteer and uh, I first of all want to thank Joe and you commissioners for your communications during all this process and uh, it's the uh, the new method this year of, of setting the targets uh, I think was done in t terms of trying to create a more efficient process and I think that's that's at least always a very good first thought uh, I, I would also like to discuss perhaps a tweak in the process where there's a uh, a, a more preliminary phase where things are a little more fluid uh, as we see this year the departments that did go over the targets are related to criminal justice public safety and uh, employee obligations that, that you folks made so if, if in the future we were faced with more of a deficit it would be nice to have the opportunity to go back and and set priorities without having to uh, talk to people who've met a defined target who would feel uh, perhaps let down a little bit that you know they they weren't a high priority and it had to go back and, and be revisited so that's just uh, food for thought um, 
for the future, but otherwise, again, I appreciate your communication and keeping the tax levy level. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Hi, Doug. Good morning. Um, I'm going to pass these out. <clears throat> Good morning, Doug Kagan, representing Nebraska Taxpayers for Freedom. Um, I have distributed you our uh, issue paper and an addendum uh, on the back of the single sheet from Jeff uh, regarding the upcoming budget. Uh, again, we really appreciate county commissioners, also officials and staff for closely cooperating with our group during the budget process. Um, <clears throat> I think that uh, Douglas County is, is outstanding in the fact that uh, it makes its budget so transparent and available to the public and taxpayers. Um, I do want to mention a, a number of various suggestions for, for uh, budget cutting in, in the future. Um, and I know you already do some of these things, but we would like you to continue to do them. Um, analyze all non-mandated uh, services and eliminate and curtail these functions like the law library or extension service, uh, lobby the legislature to end, end unfunded state mandates on counties. Also use private sector performance standards to evaluate cost and performance of county services. Install a monitoring process for use of all technologies such as cell phones, iPads, etc. Institute desk audits to analyze workloads for employees. This is something done in many uh, companies in the private sector. Uh, we don't feel there's a need for a public information officer that the staff can be the spokespersons. Uh, if intent on hiring a specific uh, one grant specialist, the specialist should replace department grant writers. Uh, keep pay raises at or below the inflation rate. End all longevity, specialty, and other added uh, pay like step increases, special time off, and tuition payments. Uh, peg pension benefits to base pay only. Require employees to pay at least 9.5% of their salary into the pension system. State patrol officers now pay 17%. Raise civilian employee retirement age to 60. Employees who retire earlier would earn drastically lower pension payments. Place higher priority on HMA recommendations that reduce uh, health center expenses. The uh, health center is still hemorrhaging about $15 million, uh, a year, and that amount could really cover a lot of other county expenses. Um, and non-mandated long-term long care services there funded by property taxes. Um, this is a new one. Investigate if UNMC might have interest to manage the health center. Uh, verify that clients and prisoners actually are mentally ill when providing health services and incarceration. Offer services only in the English language. Continue to consolidate offices at 156 and West Maple Road to save money on leases. Utilize zero-based budgeting in all departments as recommended already by your March 2016 County Strategy Development Update. Inheritance tax revenue is scheduled to drop this year by $1 million a reason to use it only for its intended purpose. And merge the county fair with the Sarpy County Fair to offer a more rural flavor. But we also have several revenue enhancement recommendations. Uh, begin an initiative to reform the nonprofit statute so that counties can levy in lieu of taxes or percentage of property taxes on no nonprofit entities. Hire collection agencies to retrieve owed fines, restitution, etc. Actively market services to adjacent government subdivisions and determine that fees charged for county services pay for both time and cost expended. And we've learned that actually you need the, the state to approve doing that so you can lobby the late, uh, state legislature. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Doug, I just wanted to say thank you for participating in our uh, property tax town hall. You took time and uh, we appreciate uh, private citizens coming out uh, and the, the briefing that you gave at that town hall uh, was informative and instructive. So thank you. Commissioner Boyle. Uh, I'd like to <clears throat> chime in. My, 
my thanks personal thanks and i think the board feels the same way you are you and your organization are valuable asset you bring us a perspective that is really needed you are for my money speaking on behalf of so many people here in this community many of the things that you'd like us to do a lot of us agree with the key word is like to do a key phrase as you know it takes we're we're an arm of the state government and so we have to anything that we want to change or try to enhance we have to get permission from the state to do and I've as you went through these excuse me I circled some and and did some things to pay some more better attention to it years ago when I first went into the mayor's office one of the things that I inherited was that the Omaha police had received a pretty hefty pay increase and then mayor vase didn't want to raise taxes to pay for it and so and I can understand that and so the I don't know who instituted it but the Chamber of Commerce did it Chamber of Commerce task force report and pulled in business people to look at the operations of the city and then categorize the changes that they suggested by whether it would take legislative action or the City Council could do it or the mayor could do it by and it was really useful and when I got into office it was on a shelf and I did take it down from the shelf and start going through it and we tried to implement those things that we could and try to make some changes that we could and uh, I consider the document you just presented uh, of equal maybe even better value uh, because it's coming from a, a taxpayers point of view so I intend to take the document you handed out and um, begin to take it through some of the committee hearings and actively discuss it see if we could get legislation get NACO support and so forth bottom line is it's a valuable document and it really comes from the perspective of informed citizens so I appreciate your activity I want to thank you publicly for the effort you put into this it's pretty astronomical it's incredible thank you Mr. Morgan Doug I too want to thank your organization and the way you participate in our budget process and I'm not trying to necessarily toot our own horn about this but I think you've said to me and you can correct me that the county budget and I know Mark and I were the my first year here we're on it I think the transparency does not exist at any other uh, subdivision of government to the level that it does here at Douglas County uh, if that's an accurate statement and uh, you know I think all of the commissioners should be proud of that and all of them participate and I really thank our chairperson and the others for always being there with us and I think what we'll try to do we had a meeting this morning at 8 uh, with Joe Lorenz that you requested I think what we'll do this fall is have some meetings to talk about some of these items that he just mentioned and kind of talk about how we do even a better job hopefully and work with Joe Lorenz and again Joe I appreciate uh, your expertise and all the help you give to us I always worry about Joe a little bit his office looks like about 10 attorneys office with the stacks of papers that he has in there but uh, he's a, a great uh, help to all of us thanks a lot well um, I want to did you have another comment come on up yeah. no go ahead come on it's more important to hear from you good morning good morning, good morning. My name is Larry Soar, 5015 Lafayette, Omaha, Nebraska, 68132. I'd like to agree with all of you in regards to Doug Kagan. My uh, appreciation to him, too. I am with their group today, but my words are going to be my words and uh, not connected, filtered, screened by anybody connected with NTL. Uh, but, uh, and hopefully I'll. Uh, Hopefully you'll take this from a humorous standpoint, but I did bring my fly swatter today. And in the spirit of the July 4th holiday coming up, I'd like to remind you all again that you are all elected, and I'm not, uh, but I pay most of the salaries of the taxes. And we have a few questions that have come up, but I'd like to first of all get on to the juvenile justice thing. Uh, I have been involved with some other groups that are monitoring courts and judges. 
and I'd like to say, you know, you can find some items in the budget to squeeze, like pensions for judges that don't represent the constituents, judges that remove us from the courtroom before we get to hear what's going on, before we get our say, before they have the facts, because somebody said something to them in their ear, in their chambers, before they even came out excuse people from the courtroom before she even sat down on the court bench. Anyway, uh, the state's going to send us another one. Well, as we're going through these things, the juvenile justice department, for example, or even the, the, the adult, when we have, we pay outside agencies, how much money to come in and study our juvenile justice and our justice system to come back and tell us how many disparities we have I won't go into that, but, but they do. Now, maybe we fired them finally, but you still have outside people coming in to tell us and then recommend programs that cost more money as well as being paid for the time they spent. Can we not find citizens in our own city and our own county to do that? We have a wonderful university. Why do we pay people from Pennsylvania? a retired Supreme Court justice from Pennsylvania to come in and give us a program on child find, family find. Now they've changed the terminology. It's called uh, saving families. And the state legislature will sit down and ask for $20 million to go into the school systems and find more children that have problems that we can go help and get taxpayer money for. Those are the things you can start saying no to. Now, in regards to the fourth, the whole idea of the uh, Declaration of Independence and our new Republican form of government is that we should not have family dynasties running our governments. <laughs> so that's a fly swatter. I don't know how many pensions you get. Can you have multiple pensions if you've been a mayor and a city councilman, et cetera, et cetera? Let's rethink that. Maybe a term limits suggestion. I can't vote. I can't tell them who to vote for, and I can't vote for the guy not in my district. But you guys, have, a lot of you have all been here since I can remember, and I'm 74. <laughs> so. Grow some other people outside the family, please. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for your comments. That's why I brought uh, Morgan Hockney here. <laughs> uh, he's to take my her. place. That was not directed against your daughter. Yeah. Anyone <laughs> else wishing to speak from the public on this? Um, I just would like to say thank you to the co-chairs and to our finance. Um, Director Joe Lorenz for um, a great budget process this year. Um, one of the things that I think is misunderstood as to the public hearings was um, the, the use of the targeting of budgets. And so when Joe sent the letter out and then it was sent back that they were supposed to meet this target, um, they were given a one and a half percent increase for salaries and then their expenses were to remain the same. So anyone who didn't meet that target were really the ones who came before us. The other ones didn't come before us because there really was no change other than that increase in their salaries. Um, that's not to say that those department directors and our finance committee and finance chair continue to work with them to try and streamline those costs. It's going on at the Youth Center right now as we speak. Um, it goes on at corrections every day when we look at um, how can we um, either stop or um, redirect individuals um, with mental illness out of the jail and into the appropriate um, services in the community. So those things happen on a daily basis. Um, but, Doug, your group I've always appreciated, and um, again, I think it would be very worthwhile, as we do every year, to sit down and go through your items one by one um, and talk about them and kind of pinpoint the ones that we want to, to work on 
either give us a direction to work on or we'll sit down and work on them together legislatively. There's a whole bunch of unfunded mandate legislative items down there, um, but they're going nowhere. Um, and that's the hard part. Um, Senator Crawford, if you remember, um, she um, did an interim study on unfunded mandates and we have the list. We have the list of those unfunded mandates. And at the same time, some of those un unfunded mandates actually save you all as taxpayers uh, money. And so we need to do a better job of making sure that that's understood as well. Um, so throughout the year, things, again, don't just stop when it comes to looking at the budget. It continually is looked at. And um, you are kind of our, um, uh, what do I want to call you guys, make sure that we stay on track and make sure that we're looking at those. And we can do it even more. And I'm more than happy to do that. So again, I appreciate your input um, as well as everybody else's. And um, one, one of the questions I did have, Joe, on the budget, I just want to make it clear um, that if we could have um, that explanation of why they're not meeting those targets a little bit better defined, I know some of it um, had to do with caseloads that increased tremendously on felonies which I find it ironic that everybody talked about how our crime was down, but yet <laughs> county government's having a hard time keeping up with the number of people in our jails <clears throat> um, and through our court systems. But if we could actually have a little bit more detail so people understand that, I know some of it is for additional attorneys, and I know some of it, um, like the public defenders, is for uh, salary increases. So if we could have a little bit more definition of what those why they didn't meet their target I think that would also help our um, taxpayers to understand our budgeting process um, but thank you again thank Commissioner you. Boyle yes uh, Mr. Storer you made some uh, I think excellent points and uh, I uh, just want to say address a couple of them so that uh, we can all focus on who can really make some changes uh, it's, it's really hard to believe, but we really are, uh, I think maybe you've heard me say before when the county assessor comes down and, and brings up uh, different uh, tax problems and so forth, and it, it turns out that we don't have any discretion, that we can't vote, you know, yes or no. And someone asks for some tax relief on a homestead, for example, and I usually lead the charge and the majority of the board goes along with it. Uh, we don't have a statutory authority to, to uh, give a homestead exemption to someone who did not make the deadline. But when you look at a homestead exemption, generally it's a person who is elderly and a lot of things come into it, medical conditions and so forth. And I really think that it's intended and so that's why I push it. And So we kind of stick our necks out and say, let's go ahead and do it. Well, the state could reverse that immediately and they have the authority to do so. So it's frustrating to me because lots of times we don't have authority to do things that we think, at least in my mind, we should do, although we do some of them. The point is that all of the, these things that you mentioned, uh, pensions and so forth and all that, are all controlled by the state legislature. And uh, I know that you're fully aware of this, but uh, the even numbered districts are up uh, for election uh, in November. And so this is an opportunity where you get commitments in public from people running for office that uh, will you vote to reduce whatever it is, pensions, or will you vote to force term limits, whatever. Get commitments, and I think when they do it, it's gonna be difficult for them to back off. Um, you know, uh, it, that's, people, people, candidates do listen and will make those commitments. So I think it's important uh, that we, we talk further about this list that we got and the things that you mentioned, and um, none, nothing that you said uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't disagree with. I do have to say, as a former mayor, I don't get a pension from the city. Uh, you may recall, I shouldn't say recall, but I, you may recall I left kind of suddenly. <laughs> but So nobody bothered to ask me, do you, do you want your pension? I don't know. Maybe it's, still, maybe it's sitting there. Now you ring a bell. I have to go see you. Make a lot of money. No, but but um, uh, in any event, you bring up a good point. You know, and, I, and I do know of uh, county employees right now who have three, three pensions. One from here, one from there, one from another p spot. Uh, and so it does happen. I mean, it's just, you know, and they're all governmental agencies. So it is really, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. But I, I just want to say that the things you brought up, 
we intend to focus, you know, I do anyway, with our legislative person, um, Marcos, and he's accessible to you as well. We need public discussion about how we can join together and go down and testify uh, together about these things. But in the formation, when you hear candidates, uh, you know, who are uh, running for office, nail them down. Uh, fine with me. Come on up. Thank you for your input. And yes, we'd like you to join us down at the State House for our three minutes. But you know, I, I think you probably get more than three minutes. No, we don't. <laughs> we get the same amount that but you But also, uh, I remember another <laughs> board meeting like this where Mr. Duda, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't you try to pass the buck to the state also? That you have no prerogatives because it's dictated by the state. Okay, well, will you join us then in a constitutional amendment as you suggested we might need? You're the leaders here. You have more power than I am. Okay. okay. So maybe that would be an idea. Okay. There's okay. lots of good ideas. Thank you. And we will work. I will work with you for sure, and I'm sure most of the board will as well. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Thank you. Um, Joe uh, Lorenz, a uh, good point was brought up about maybe a little more level of detail on some of the criminal justice ones, but I, I noticed that the largest single dollar amount uh, request over target is for the, uh, I guess that's health insurance, is that right, Joe, the 400000 at the bottom of the list there? Yes. Okay. I, and I would appreciate a little more level of detail on that one. Uh, as well, so when sure, we sure. Back, I'll, I'll put together you know, a summary sheet for all those. Right, right. I think uh, I think that would be good. Thanks. Okay. Commissioner Rogers. Uh, I just want to make a point to the gentleman. I don't know if I join you in a constitutional amendment, but uh, there are terms called uh, home rule counties, right? And so, if if you want the county to have more control, it, it needs to be under home rule, where it has some distinction from the state. Uh, on certain things, so that that's out there. A number of states have done it, and uh, so you want some alliance on that? I'll join you on that. Okay, Thank that's you. a good point. Well, and again, I think we're open for continually um, conversing with you on items, and it doesn't just have to be budget either. It can be your items that you're talking about that you want to take have us take a deeper dive in with you and again that's why we have the committee process and we can certainly use that to really flush out some of the items that you're talking about um, it is kind of hard to understand and it's not I want to make clear that this board doesn't try to pass the buck but we also have to realize where we have the authority to do something and not do something but that doesn't mean that we don't continually try to get to the state to work with us. So whatever items you have, we'd be more than happy to um, continually work with you on those, because I'm with you on the, the juvenile court items. Um, with that, um, that is it for the budget um, conversation. We do have a couple items for child and youth. The first is the Douglas County Youth Center report, and that's going to be held over until um, maybe next week. Um, the resolution directing the closure of the staff <coughs> secure unit at the Douglas County Youth Center as it is no longer needed. Um, did Patrick, did you want to comment Right, on that? so it's actually empty now. There are no kids in there because of the uh, requirements of the Prison Rape Elimination Act, known as PREA. There's some much stricter classification requirements how you classify detainees. So we really need that unit um, because of the new classification standards, and we really have no use for it. We don't have any any kids in that staff secure unit anyway. Okay, Commissioner Rogers. Yeah, I just want to note to the board and to the public at um, 20. Oh, 2007 when some of the heavy reform efforts started and a lot of the impetus for that reform effort was the fact that the, the jail was, well not the jail, the, the detention center was at our max is 144 and because it was up around 214 or somewhere around there consistently that's what triggered a lot of the efforts for reform. 
this closing of uh, staff secure actually will put the capacity there around 96, which is not bad. That's a reduction from what it was. And actually, I just bring that up to the board because um, the average there now, since things are, could range somewhere between 70 to 50, and probably could actually go more if there were services provided for kids sitting there that don't have services to go to. So I just want that to be known that the capacity now goes to 96, which is well below what's needed, and actually, to me, is a good thing because it causes us to find a way to to solve the issue of the kids that are sitting there that actually don't need to be in containment. So I just wanted to make that for the record. Commissioner Duda. Thank you. Uh, just a quick follow-up question. What becomes of the space? What What is now? Mine's that is used. Uh, it's, u it's used for um, regular standard business. Okay. Thank so you. That's what, that's what puts us back in uh, 96. Good. Thank you. Patrick. Uh, I was just going to clarify that, as I stated previously, it needs to be used for secure detention because of the PREA standards. And there, there has been and probably will be um, further conversations um, with mental health issues and mental health services at the youth center as we're Good. seeing at the jail as well. Um, but again I think as Commissioner Rogers says this gives us a great opportunity to really push for um, the alternative programs and ramping those up especially when it comes to DMC issues um, disproportionate minority contact issues in the jail um, that is becoming not only um, more locally heard here but it's nationally it's an issue and so I think we can take this as an opportunity to try to increase those alternative um, services that we provide so that they're equally provided both to our minority populations and um, our white populations. Um, so this is kind of the, um, I guess, silver lining in the black cloud a lot of times that hangs over us with our uh, juvenile <coughs> system. So um, is, was there a motion to approve? Motion by Commissioner Rogers, second by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Motion passes. <coughs> Um, next is the discussion and action on the 2017-18 Visitors Improvement Fund allocation recommendation submitted by the Visitors Promotion Council. You do have in your packet the recommendations. Um, there have also been a couple of um, additional things we need to discuss that have been um, requested. Um, the mayor of Ralston called and they had been awarded an allocation last year um, but were late with our allocation this year and are requesting um, 15000 for their Independence Day events but we're recommending that they add an additional 5000 uh, to our conversation today for that event. Again, we are kind of working off the premise of one strike and you're out, so this is their only time that if they're late ever again, they won't get a reconsideration or a consideration. Um, the next one is an award allocation, and the amount is to be determined today through discussions. Um, Kyle Peterson from ESPN contacted me, and this is pretty exciting. They want to develop a college baseball hall of fame here in the community. Um, that would be something that is uh, year-round, not just um, during the College World Series. This is separate from that. Um, and they are looking both towards the city and the county for some dollars to um, do a um, uh, startup of the plan, so to see whether or not it would be sustainable. Um, so we're looking at maybe about 20000 to give um, them for that in conjunction with the city. 
And then the only other one is a change of purpose. This doesn't um, change the amount of dollars at all that we're giving to the Douglas County Fair Association. It was supposed to be for a feasibility study, but they're asking for the dollars to be put towards the fair and the high school champion challenge rodeo for 2017. And of course, we all know that that was um, a very successful event. And so um, again, no dollar changes. It's just um, a request for it to be used in a different manner. And so with that, I would open up the discussion on our 2017-18 Visitors Improvement Fund Allocation. Commissioner Boyle. Um, regarding uh, Ralston, um, have, we, uh, have we done this in the past? I mean, have, have we? They got it last year. Okay, who did we do it for last year, do you remember? Ralston. Again? Oh, you mean the late? What yeah. are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about Ralston where uh, someone, they say we blew the deadline, or is that what they did? They didn't get their application in on time. Okay, well, uh, does this, it seems to me that we always said that's kind of too bad. We basically have used the, um, again, the. we did it twice before, and it yep. was kind of you get one time and then that's it, so if they're ever late again, there okay. won't be a consideration. Okay, who'd we do it for? Does anybody remember? The uh, Johnny Rogers Foundation okay. for the uh, uh, award, punt return awards. Oh, yeah. And then we did it. Uh, one time for Love Jazz. For who? Love, Love Jazz. Jazz. And we did it. Okay. One, well, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't late at the point, but it was an event at Ralston for a Native American group that just bought in a gargantuan amount of Still people. the powwow. Yeah, we didn't do it okay. right here, but we negotiated with them. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I, just, I just had that question. Yeah. I did want to ask about uh, the other, uh, we were talking about uh, this uh, Hall of Fame thing, which I think is a great idea. Uh, would that be an application through this uh, mechanism? Yes. Okay, so it wouldn't be coming now or anything? It would be kept. They're asking for it this year. Okay. But what their hope is, again, is when they do the plan, um, it will show that it is sustainable so they, um, they wouldn't have to come back every year and ask for money. They want to build this thing so that it's self-sustaining. So they think... So they would be getting some money once from us, from this? It, it wouldn't pre preclude them from ever applying, okay. but that's what their hope is. Okay. Um, so have we done that before, that sort of thing? Yeah, Commissioner Rogers. We, you seem to be, I, the, I, no, you seem to be the troublemaker. Yeah, here. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> we, haven't, we haven't done it particularly from here because um, noted past history, you know, we try to treat, keep yeah. this clean. But, I, you know, I've, I've asked for after about a three-month period in September for a similar one. I mean, the thing with this is with nothing's guaranteed. The project failed through in Lubbock, and everything is rallying around here. Okay. It's a one-time shot Good. to make it feasible, and if it's feasible, All right. they have national donors ready to build it. Okay. Good so deal. Okay, I, I can support that. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Kavanaugh? Yeah, I'd like to uh, commend Mike Leahy. Mike, if you'd come down. Uh, uh, Chairman of the uh, Visitors Promotion Council for the uh, hard work and time and effort that he and the other volunteer <laughs> members of the committee have put in. Um, thank you, Michael. Uh, we appreciate that. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't know if you have any comments on this year's uh, round of grants. It seems to be a, a robust fund this year. <clears throat> it was. Thank you, Commissioner. Good morning. One and all. Morning. Um, Mike Leahy, 4702 Shirley Street. Um, yes, the fund is a little more robust this year, and there was kind of a, a slightly irregular but not unwelcome situation involving. Can you the do the microphone, of, Mike? Yes, involving the return of some funds from uh, a year after year recipient, um, which was a benefit to all the other applicants this year. In our transmittal letter to the commissioners, we, uh, with Catherine's help, um, wanted to convey to the applicants next year and in years to come that this year's larger number that was available for uh, distribution is unlikely to be repeated. And so the, the nonprofit community should, you know, uh, even as they accept awards from the commissioners this year, perhaps uh, lower their expectations for next year because uh, the fund is, begins anew every year. And just for the record and to follow up on the discussion of a moment ago, there was another 
couple of years ago applicant that had a late application. It was film streams, and the Board of Commissioners corrected that as they had just done with the City of Ralston. So the view we take on late applications as a volunteer commission is that we lack the discretion to override a late application, but the commissioners have complete discretion to do as they wish with that. It's a great process. I'm very happy to be participating in this. It's fun to review these applications that really express who we are as a county from Juneteenth to the Jocelyn Museum that really make our community fun to be involved in. So thank you very much, and, of course, welcome any other questions. Thanks, Mike. You know, I think that Mayor Grosser from Ralston might have reached out to you. I know he did to me and I think other commissioners as well and explained that there had been a change in personnel and the person who was responsible for the grant application had moved on and they kind of dropped the ball a little bit and it wouldn't happen again. That said, we appreciate your hard work and dedication. This is an important fund, and I think it does good work in terms of what it's supposed to do, bringing heads to beds and filling seats at the stadium and all the other wonderful things. I mean, this is a great list of projects, and it makes our community better, and your work on that is a big part of that. So thank you very much. Thank you all. And I'm particularly proud to have a constituent as chairman of this committee. Thank you. Glad to be here from the district. Commissioner Kraft. Mike, don't go too far, but first, Commissioner Borgeson, you mentioned, okay, the sheet we have on our table says add a ward allocation of $5,000. Then you mentioned $15,000. Are you saying to add $5,000 to the $15,000? No. They requested $15,000, but we looked at what they were awarded last year and just were giving them the same amount. Okay. Then, Joe, we have approximately $27,000 left in the fund. Is that correct? I think this year, yeah, there's $27,000, but we receive funds on a monthly basis from, you know, as the tax is collected. So, you know, as that money is received over the course of the year, it gives us the financial flexibility to potentially fund some of these things that weren't in this original number. Okay. And what exactly, anybody who can answer this, how would the money, if we give it to ESPN, how would it be used? What would it be used for? For a feasibility study for the creation of the Hall of Fame. Chair, I think that would be unnatural. I don't think you need a feasibility study. Well, for the site. Oh, site study. Okay. For the site being established here in the community. Okay, thank you. I read feasibility. I'm sorry. Yeah, I said that wrong. And Commissioner Rogers wants to say something. Commissioner Rogers. To add on to it, it's that, but it's also, I mean, we're not, it's us, the city, and some other entities. Because including the feasibility study will be, if the feasibility study goes out, I think my understanding is that there will be a person that will be full-time coordinating this thing and working the setup to get it set. So it's to line everything up. And like I was mentioning, we just basically need to do the due diligence. If everything pans out, there's like a 99% chance that we become the home. So, and I won't say, but they do have some places identified that are good. Right. And Mike, as chair of the Community Service Committee, thank you very much. I tried not to butt in this year. I know that's appreciated, at least at your level. What do you feel about the three different items we have, the Ralston, the allocation to ESPN, and the change? I do believe the change is necessary for the fair board because a feasibility study for location compared to putting on the high school rodeo and the fair, there's no comparison. But what is your opinion? I agree, and I guess I'd take the last one first. The Douglas County Fair is kind of 
become a bit of an outlier, and so I'm glad the Board of Commissioners is handling that uh, as an individual matter. Uh, as far as the NCAA's request, you know, that's the type of request that as a community body delights us because it's something new. It'll be a new applic an applicant next year, I would presume, and probably for the years to come. It just adds to the visitor attractions and events that uh, the county is able to offer. And finally, as for the city of Ralston, uh, again, as I said, sometimes, you know, somebody misses a deadline on the paperwork and fortunately with respect to this fund and the powers of the, the commissioners it's not a fatal error it's simply something that can be cleaned up as I think the board has just done and, and as far as the purpose of the fund a major purpose is heads and beds and to benefit the entire community um, the money to Ralston I love Ralston I have many 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 friends and relatives who live there but I just don't see that bringing any heads and beds and I would say to that you know, the sim similar types of discussions we have with the stakeholders in our public meetings and there right. usually is well first of all there is representation on the VPC from the hospitality community I think the bylaws or the, the rules yeah. require at least two members and so we do have that on a year on an annual basis uh, during recent years particularly during the, the Great Recession there was a lot more tension and competition if you will for these nonprofit uh, applicants I think the nonprofits were being squeezed all over the community not just in this I recall sector. that yes yes and there was a lot of discussion about that heads and beds economic analysis versus the kind of non allocable goodwill um, that other funds, you know, for like a Ralston parade, which I, I believe is one of the biggest, if not the largest, Fourth of July parade in the state of Nebraska. Um, I don't think anybody um, would quarrel that it may not be a fill up the hotel rooms, uh, College World Series sort of event, but that's not the sole purpose of the fund. And, and right. we try our best to kind of analyze those economic benefits because you know, we certainly share uh, that goal. Because that's indeed how this fund gross and uh, but at the same time balance out you know what I guess I used the word smaller uh, less economically impactful events that um, while perhaps not on a dollar for dollar basis have I would say an equal goodwill benefit as expressed through the county okay and um I can see the College Baseball Hall of Fame really bringing tourists in. Uh, nostalgia, tourists, baseball tourists, college tourists, and, and uh, perhaps people even staying an extra day at the College World Series. Um, I, I can support number two and number three. I just am torn with the one for the Ralston fireworks um, and this is for fireworks correct it's for their whole independence day does that, does that include the parade mm -hmm. yes okay then I can support it okay good okay <clears throat> thank you if I could just say one word I don't mean to interrupt uh, yes. about to vote. I forgot to thank Catherine and Karen and the commissioner's staff uh, along with Kristen Lynch and her colleagues in the county attorney's office for their guidance through this process making sure our meet public meetings were noticed properly and that we had our forums and we're doing everything according to Hoyle um, I'd also like to thank I, I can't I'm always going to mispronounce Mike's last name in the commissioner's office for the audit the internal audit Dr. that was conducted <laughs> I'm still never gonna get it right the auditor <laughs> who did some really good work um, looking into our processes and reminding us that we can always improve and that yielded a lot of discussion in our group and, and thank you for bringing that up because they did work hard we have a fantastic group of employees and the gentleman whose name you couldn't remember I don't want to say it because if people know who he is they may steal him from us <laughs> and the public sector pays so much more than we pay the private sector the private sector I'm sorry <laughs> private sector I am so pleased to have him and I've told him that many times uh, so with that um, I will make a motion okay. for five thousand dollars to the city of Ralston twenty thousand dollars to the College Baseball Hall of Fame and the reallocation of the funds for the for the um, 
Douglas, Douglas County Fair Association. And that's just adding those, your motion is for the overall right, yes. um, <coughs> agenda item and adding those to Correct. it. Correct. Um, commit, uh, Catherine? Uh, one comment and one question. Uh -huh. um, the comment is just for the board's information. Um, one of the recommendations of the audit was to, for each uh, recipient to enter into an agreement with the county and the county attorney's office drafted that and it's attached. Um, and so that should more, should formalize the award arrangement and that was something the VPC I endorsed in their discussions. Um, and the second question is just seeking a little bit of clarity about the um, Baseball Hall of Fame request. Is the applicant organization, um, is that ESPN or? It has to be a not for profit. Right. The <laughs> reason I ask is the statute requires that um, applicants Just must be, or recipients must be either a non profit organization or an organization owned by the public. Yeah, I suggest that we lay uh, that over. No, uh, can I? Uh, can I make a suggestion that we just designate it to the Convention's Business Bureau? That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Should you're, we do that work for the Convention's Bureau? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. That works. They are, by the way, and it should be today that they have their 501c3. Who, who's that? The ha Baseball Hall of Fame. Thank you. They were establishing one here to be able to CBB? accept yeah. the dollars. CVB is good. With okay. Uh, Commissioner Rogers. Um, uh, Commissioner Kraft did what I was going to do, but I just want to know one point that Mike made, and it's worth reno renewing. The total purpose is not heads and beds. There also there's leisure tourism, and there's convention tourism, and Ralston and the other things play a big part in making sure that when people come in town, we have something for them to do. So that's the leisure tourism piece. I just want to make that. Yeah. Commissioner Boyle. Yes, uh, I, uh, I do have a question about the. Uh, um, the fair, first of all, objective being called Douglas County because it's not an official organization, but in, in my estimation, it implies that this is Douglas County, like the Douglas County Health Center, not the same thing. Um, I think the story that was in the World Herald, apparently none of you saw it, um, it showed six people sitting around watching some guy play a guitar inside the Crossroads Mall. And, uh, you know, this is what Dwarnicki told us, and either we're going to follow through with our auditor who incidentally used to work for Berkshire Hathaway. Uh, we're going to either do what the auditor tells us we need to do to comply with uh, these donations, and that is uh, make sure that uh, truly the people who are attending uh, are coming from outside and that we need to know where they're coming from and if they're staying in beds or trailers or what it is they're doing. Uh, we need to be accountable for this. And um, so, uh, Mike, I'm concerned about uh, what you're doing to see that these organizations take attendance? Well, there there is an aspect of it. The, the applicants assemble their own data and they make representations in their application that go through the commissioner's office. And to an extent, as a volunteer board, we rely on those. Um, some of those are more objectively uh, susceptible to verification, you know, things like the Omaha Children's Museum, the Jocelyn, they have professional staff that are able to uh, count those. those uh, so, so they make an estimate of who's attending or do they report who did attend? Sometimes th there are some organizations that, that uh, periodically review license plates. Um, so they may, it may not be scientific, but they're able to, when they present their application, to say 40% from outside Douglas County. You know, I, did the, Douglas County, did the Douglas County Fair people do that? I beg your pardon? Did the Douglas County Fair not people Not to my knowledge. Okay, well, that's pretty important to me. If they're not playing by the rules, then apparently are they required to do this? It's an estimate. I mean, it's, it's information that we are requesting. Um, and that they didn't give it to you? I don't remember what their application provided. Catherine, Catherine, do you remember? Yes, every applicant this year provided attendance information. So the uh, Douglas County Fair did give you information? Correct. Okay. Well, I'd like to know what they estimated because I think, uh, from what I read in the World Herald, it was a dismal, it was a failure, I believe was the word that was used. And the photograph, honest to God, showed one guy playing a guitar and six people sitting around. I, that's just not, you know, this is someone, someone's dream, and we're using uh, money that could go to other organizations to 
uh, let people have their do their thing. And frankly, I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, but did we have a full accounting of the money that we gave them the last time? Wasn't there, was there, was there a shortage? <coughs> Joe, do you know? Was there a shortage of funds last time? I know I'm using, this computer was taken from the fair board and I'm using it. So I mean, something's gone off the rails. Can I come in, Madam Chair? Can I come in? Mr. Rogers. I mean, uh, I, I hear what you're saying, but it, um, last week they the, the I forgot the gentleman's name, but he Matt, Matt Gunderson. Gunderson. Matt Gunderson. Uh, he presented, you know, thorough reporting to the um, committee yeah. on their plans, what they need to do, and I think everybody felt comfortable with uh, the new backing that comes behind it, the recording mechanism that's come through the Friends of Extension, and so I think. There, they answered everything in some respects of what the past and what it was laid out, and at least I felt pretty comfortable with that in that respect. Now, that is fair. You know, last year was there, but I think when when they came, they knew it was going to be a rough start in separating and trying to start it from there. And I think there's a good chance that what they've laid out and learned from that mistakes will be a good piece. Um, so um, a lot of that discussion did happen last week, and I feel confident in the guidance and the professional accounting that they're going to bring to it that keeps it there. So What's the last thing you said? The guidance and the professional accounting that they're bringing to it to account for the physical issues that happened. And I think everybody that was there felt, felt the same way pretty much. Well, uh, did that include, you know, I, I, the article I read in the World Herald, the person, I don't whatever her name was, who had this computer that was seat taken from her and now I've got it, which is great, I appreciate it, um, was, uh, uh, she pretty much threw us under the bus. She said, well, the county didn't tell me what to do, didn't tell me how to account for the money. So yeah, do we have, wasn't it, weren't we short about five grand? And what happened to that? I, I think they gave reporting, but you know, she isn't the first person that throw the county under the bus, so I mean. <laughs> well, I know I that, but I mean, the, usually people who throw us under the bus don't get another $60,000 from she's, us. She's, she's not, not, she's no not her, with it's not her, she's, she's, she's gone. Okay, well, I mean, did we get the money that was short or not? I think we accounted for it. I, I can't tell you. I'll tell you, I, I don't think we did. I mean, I'd be very shocked if we actually pushed and got the money because I don't think they accounted for that money, and I want to know where it is. It's, uh, in my view, it's not tax dollars necessarily, but it was, this is part of, uh, I guess, produced by taxes uh, uh, that are charged by people who stay in motels and hotels. So I really object to that. And plus, the other thing is it just simply is not functioning. And that's why I want the I want a, a strict attendance taken at that event. Uh, if we have to pay sixty-five thousand dollars to have attendance taken, I'd rather do that. Let them run it by themselves, and let's pay and have somebody in there and find out who is going there. And I, you know, we could ask the World Herald for copies of that article if you haven't seen it, but it was really incredible, unbelievable. Okay. And so, Commissioner Boyle, can I just say that I I understand where you're coming from with this, but. I think we have to, this is again kind of a startup, if you will. We're starting from scratch and we have some good people that are, um, again, I think trying as best as they can and we actually got a couple more good board members um, that have joined it that I think if we give it a couple more years to try to really um, establish itself and take off, it's not going to be at Crossroads this year, it's going to be out at Chance. Ridge, and so um, again, I think that we just need to give them a little bit more time to reestablish themselves, and I think you'll see it um, come to fruition a little better than it had the last year. Well, I, I don't, I don't mean to be as argumentative as I sound, but I think this is their third, this is their third year, whoever they are, and it has been a dismal failure. Uh, ha they have squandered the funds. Uh, that they were given and they didn't account for them. I think they're short money. So I am opposed to giving anyone any money for something called the Douglas County Fair, which is not the Douglas County Fair. It's uh, whoever it is, Joe Doak's Fair, because it's private. It's not us. And I think it, we're, you, it, we're lending, lending our name to an organization that is not uh, us. That bothers me, number one. And I going to ask the legal counsel to talk to us about that sometime soon. The other is the turnout is not adequate for this kind of money. 
and I will ask, I will go down and personally buy back issues if they're available from the World Herald and see that each one of you gets a copy of that because it is a, a scathing article on the failure of that organization and they should not be getting money. If they want to do this, go out and collect money themselves. Go get, see if there's such support for this, get the money and come in and, and maybe we could match it or do something, but I, I wouldn't even want to do that. But I am demanding that there be a full uh, census of who attends in light of the fact that they still haven't paid us back the money, that I don't believe, and secondly because it's a track record of no one attending. I, I, want a, I want proof that people are coming to that event. I really do. And from where? And if they're sleeping in trailers or hotels or what it is they're doing. So uh, that bothers me quite a bit. And, um, I, I, obviously, I've said it all, but I, I am going to demand that, uh, Mike, we can't tell you, you're a volunteer, but who is going to take the census out there to, to show that there is, that they've earned the money? Who's going to do that? Nobody. Mike, I think we, okay, functions? just a minute. Mike, we, we have heard that you, that's what you want, okay. and we will work with the fair all right. to make sure that they again provide their, their uh, attendance. Well. I want something that's more neutral because last time it was fantasy. Okay, I'll, I'll work Thank on you, that. thank you, Commissioner. Yep. Commissioner Kavanaugh. Uh, thanks. Um, Mike, again, thank you for all the hard work that uh, you and the committee members do. Um, I, I'm the newest person on here, so uh, this is a learning curve for me, but it seems that you guys do all the heavy lifting. And we're here to, you know, say, well, thank you, and uh, moving on. Um, I don't know, Mike, if, if we want to go through each one of these grants um, individually, but if we did, I guess we could do away with the committee and entertain the individual grants as individual commissioners. I think it was done that way at one time. Uh, I think you told me that. Uh, and. Um, if that's if that's where you want to go with this, I mean, I, I I guess we could do it that way, but I appreciate what you guys do because it alleviates this discussion on each and every single uh, grant application. I think we all have our favorites. Um, I particularly want to invite uh, Commissioner Kraft to the Ralston uh, Fourth of July parade, the largest Fourth of July parade in the state of Nebraska, uh, and there are. I don't know, close to 100,000 people in attendance. Uh, it's packed, uh, and you can ride with me at any uh, Fourth of July that you want down the uh, Main Street of Rolston. It's a it's a big big deal. Uh, it's uh, I've I've yeah. ridden with you, and I'm not sure I wanted to. Die. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can drive. I, I, I'm not I'm not uh, particular, um, but I again. Thanks, and and, th and please relay our thanks to all the uh, committee members. I know that you guys meet um, and work long and hard on, I don't know, there's scores of these applications, and it's not an easy job. Uh, and uh, I think you really do a good job for us in terms of trying to make the Visitor's Improvement Fund do what it's supposed to do, which is to bring people to visit in Douglas County and hopefully spend some of their hard-earned money on, on Douglas County stuff. Uh, I think it's successful. Um, you know, certainly we have uh, problems. I, I, the one that Commissioner Boyle uh, pointed out, and there have been a few others, but by and large, it seems to work pretty well. I mean, uh, am I missing something here, or generally, are we are we hitting the mark? I, I would say Commissioner Boyle has identified an issue that is a recurring point of discussion for our group. Because you do see nonprofits, community nonprofits, that have something of a life cycle. You know, they start, they grow, they mature, they plateau, and then there's, you know, a lot of times there's turnover on nonprofit boards, and sometimes they struggle. And th I'm not going to name any names, but there were some uh, entities in the last five, ten years that experienced that struggle, and we pulled back. Um, you know, it wasn't because they were unworthy of recommending to, to the commissioners that they receive funds, we took it upon ourselves in those few instances to look more closely at the governance, to look more closely at the value, not necessarily economic value, but the lifestyle value 
that was being provided at that time based on what they were requesting. And I will say, you know, it's not our doing, but those groups, each of them did make those improvements and did strengthen their boards of directors and tighten up their nonprofit procedures. And they're back in the game and they're, you know, adding to our cultural life here in Douglas County today. Thanks. Commissioner Duda. Thank you. Regarding the Fair Association, and Commissioner Boyle, we'll never get your support because the Fair is merging with Extension and these two have had a target on their backs forever in your mind. And so putting the two of them together is not going to make them any more appealing to you, I don't suspect. However, I want to point out the Fair sponsors three events every year. They have the trail ride out at Lake Cunningham, and clearly we have people come in from out of town for this. They have the high school championship out at Elkhorn where kids come in from six states. How many people come in for Septemberfest overnight? How many heads and beds does it make? We have no idea. Probably none. So I get tired of picking on the Fair, which does bring people in. We don't have one dollar of property taxes in the Fair anymore. Yes, this was a bit of a transition that this Fair board has had to go through when they kind of outgrew and River City Roundup said, we're no longer compatible, we're starting to compete with each other, and we need to go our separate ways. And so they went off by themselves for a year. We've had some issues, and we are, we, at least Commissioner Kraft and I, who've been kind of involved with the process here, are very pleased at where this is heading with the Friends of Extension Foundation. A good, reputable 501C that's already existing has said we are willing to partner with the Fair and take them under our wing. And even the Fair board, who has been struggling with the finances, I mean, this is another group of volunteers, and they don't like the turmoil and trouble that they've gone through either. They're anxious to get a steady future, and when this proposal was made, they asked the Extension Foundation if they wouldn't start the bookkeeping a year early, just to help them make sure all of their books are on the level, are transparent. They're doing everything they can to improve the system, to come up with a process that will be more palatable to us and the public. So I commend you, although I've got to say, as a group of volunteers, this is probably the most fun job in the county. I mean, I remember 20 years ago when this fund was less than a million dollars a year. Now we're up over $4 million a year that you get to allocate. So, yes, I appreciate what you do, but it's also kind of a fun job to, I think, get to make those recommendations. The Fair Board is another group of volunteers, and their job is not as much fun. They do a lot of work on our behalf, and I appreciate what they do. I appreciate the Extension Foundation stepping forward and saying we think there may be an opportunity for us to help right the ship. We'll work together and do what we can to improve the system. I feel very good about where it is going, and if we want to start beating them up because they aren't making enough heads and beds, then let's do it to every organization, not single them out. They do bring people in. Thank you. Yes. Matt Gunderson, could you come to the mic, please? Thank you, Commissioners. I was doing a pretty good job of it, too. Good morning, Commissioners. Since Commissioner Boyle missed the meeting where you did your presentation, would you do a quick presentation for him? Sure. And Commissioner Boyle, member of the County Commission, Matt Gunderson, chairman of the Extension Foundation, and as of 30 days ago, the new recently elected treasurer of the Douglas County Fair Foundation. Commissioner Boyle, you are correct in that report in the World Herald, of which I have a copy that I carry with me of that article, as well as accounting of the full audit provided by the Douglas County Auditor to what happened during the transitional phase. I'll call it the transitional phase, anyway, of the Douglas County Fair, transitioning out of the Knights of Exarban Foundation to a standalone organization. And I agree, it was not ran correctly. The audit did a good job of bringing those inaccuracies and things to light, and it's unfortunate that the county got thrown underneath the proverbial bus, if you will, within the article for things as it comes about. As Commissioner Duda has talked about, the county fair board has been making attempts to right that ship and make some changes along the way with it. 
um, my my background is uh, in um, e exhibition fair planning, formerly been at the Mesa Examiner Foundation and running River City Rodeo and Stock Show and the Douglas County Fair when it was a portion of that. And so uh, I was extremely concerned as well uh, when that report came out about what that looked like for the fair, the future accounting of the fair and some things. I think the fair can move forward and meet the needs of Douglas County and the 262 fund from several aspects. It can bring in um, visitors from out of town. It can also, as Commissioner Rogers has talked about, support members and the constituents of Douglas County in putting that together. Uh, it has a ways to go to make that happen, accountability of attendance and budgeting and other things to be able to make that happen, um, but they're starting to write that ship. The uh, proposal before um, the committee today tied to the Visitor Improvement Fund VPC Council um, it, it is a step, and I'm going to call it a step, in that direction of putting on an event 417 with much larger plans for 2018. Um, we have made a proposal um, as the Extension Foundation, I as the Chair, uh, to the Douglas County Fair Board, uh, as well as last week's Community Services Committee to, I'm going to term it as revamp and overhaul the Douglas County Fair starting in 2018. Um, with more of a fair campus style concept with expanded roles and activities and events that not only can benefit the constituents of Douglas County as part of the 262 pro, uh, requirements, but also bring in visitors from out of town who are staying in hotels, motels, heads and beds, if you will, to attract that, to give back to the fund that is helping fund that fair. Unfortunately, it's, all of this is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some steps and process to be able to make uh, this happen. Um, the, the fair um, board, I am the newly elected treasurer of the fair foundation. Um, this is what happens when you show up to a meeting to make a proposal to join. Um, they were needing some accounting and guidelines for things to be able to make that happen. And so um, I personally volunteered. I am not a resident of Douglas County, but I am now on the fair foundation board uh, as the treasurer to uh, utilize our uh, 501c3's accounting uh, capabilities to bring strength to that fair already starting in 2017 to bring more accounting to address those issues that were in that auditor's report to turn the ship, if you will, and try to right that ship moving forward. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a multi-year process to be able to make that happen. Wh where w the unfortunate uh, fair arrived at uh, post-2016 event, early 2017, took a while to get there. And it's going to take a little while to be able to get that um, corrected uh, along the way with things. but. Um, it is an opportunity, I think, to uh, benefit and really fit the exact criteria uh, of, of what um, the 262 fund sits and appreciates for. Along with that, though, um, the allocation, reallocation of funds today comes to the point of it doesn't do a darn bit of good to have a feasibility study on a site if you can't have the fair. And so it's not something that we want to be able to fund in a feasibility study for a fairgrounds. That's Matt pers speaking personally. Um, there's plenty of other spaces in town to be able to do this, not to build a fairgrounds, not to have the counties in the building business, and you talk about it at all your meetings about the building business. The fair doesn't need to be, in Matt's personal opinion, in the building business, but what it needs to do is put on a, a, a world-class fair for the constituents of Douglas County that brings in outside visitors in locations that already exist. This funds help to be able to put on a, an event for 2017 with a longer-term goal of writing that ship and, and making it a more expansive role uh, starting in 2018 and beyond. Okay. Matt, thank you. What, what is a little bit of your history with fairs? Sure. Um, so uh, my history, I guess, uh, personal history with fairs, I grew up in South Dakota, southeast part of South Dakota. I was 4-H uh, livestock superintendent in college at the South Dakota State Fair and went on to be, become uh, the youth 4-H and youth horse livestock specialist for South Dakota 4-H overseeing 5,000 animals and 4,000 families at the South Dakota State Fair for the 4-H division. Uh, went on to become head of 4-H activities and events uh, at the Nevada Cooperative Extension in Reno. And then from there, uh, spent nine events, uh, 10 years at the Knights of Exarban Foundation, uh, helping raise funds and put on the, uh, at that time, Exarban's River City Roundup morphed into Exarban's River City Rodeo and Stock Show, which also included the Douglas County Fair. And, and so you have experience in fundraising? Yes. Considerable experience from what I know. The other thing is you have a position of authority with a very large corporation, do you not? Yes. Okay. If, if you want to talk about it, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Uh, 
that that's all I have for you at the moment, at least. And and I'm going to make a request to my c Commissioner Boyle to stop being an angry old man. <laughs> <laughs> you, using exaggeration and the use of psycholinguistics. Uh, you know, five thousand dollars. It was not five thousand dollars. The amount of discrepancy was six hundred dollars, and it was could be attributed to sloppy bookkeeping. We cannot prove anything. The other thing is, um, it would cost us more to go after the six hundred dollars than we would recouper. Now, y you know you're beating a dead horse. So please don't talk us to death on this item again and again and again and again and again. You've talked us to death on the committee meetings, on the board meetings. Uh, every time the word extension or the county fair comes up, you spend a half an hour of our time collectively. So please, you know, don't talk us to death. I made the request of somebody else. I'm making it of you now. Thank you. Well, <laughs> I, first of all, I do have to say I, I have pretty much buried the hatchet with uh, extension. It's something I've come to grips with. It's just like the um, uh, crime lab. It's something that can't be attained. And uh, I, I was, uh, I think, uh, in part of the group that got the merger going with SARPY, which I think has worked well. Um, but uh, I, you know, uh, Commissioner Duda, I always enjoy when you get the microphone when it pertains to me because you, you characterize things that I, I do. I have no motives with uh, extension and uh, the fair board. I do object to the use of the name. I do object to the fail, failure to account, and I don't those things. But I don't, I'm not bearing grudges. I don't bear grudges. Life is too short. I went to, I went to a mass at St. Margaret Mary shortly after I was recalled from office. And there was an Asian priest there, I forgot his name, Father Ben, ben Laryl. I guess he was Spanish. I, I think he was Asian. Anyway, he was talking about, it was on New Year's, and he started talking about uh, how, we should, um, how we should treat New Year's, what we should do about New Year's, and so forth. And I was actually listening to him. And what he said was that uh, you should look ahead uh, to what you want to accomplish in New Year's. That uh, life, uh, you know, it's like uh, looking in the past gets you nothing. And he said, it's a lot like driving a car. Uh, you glance in the rear view mirror, you don't stare. And so that's my philosophy. I don't have any ax to grind with any, and I, and I accept, because of my years of life and my age, uh, I do accept the fact that sometimes things that I want to do aren't going to get done. And uh, it, one of them is uh, extension. I think it's a horrible waste of money, but it's not going to change. I think the crime lab is a horrible waste of money, having several of them, but it's not going to change. So I have accepted those things, and I really am not after extension. Uh, but I do object to the use of the name Douglas County. But anyhow, so, uh, I, and I don't think I'm an angry old man. I think what I'm doing is I'm asking questions. Uh, I think I'm asking questions. <laughs> can, can we vote on that? <laughs> <laughs> Abstain. But anyway, but I think what I'm doing is asking questions about how money is being spent. And I, and I do get concerned when it's, and particularly by the reporting that I read, uh, was that it just, it, there wasn't an accounting, and it was kind of like we were at fault because we didn't sh tell her what to do or whatever. And I know she's not there anymore and all that sort of thing. And, and Good luck with a fresh start, but of course I have I have a basic problem with an urban area like us doing a county fair, and I and I uh, you know I um, that's just the way I am. I, I don't think it you know we're always trying to come across if you read Mike Kelly's columns as some cosmopolitan area, and then we you know when I was mayor I think I said told you this the intersection of 16th and Farnham was supposed to be an ear ear of corn, and if you look at the now they're gone I think but the benches that used to be along there. Uh, there was an ear of corn, and, and I thought, you know, okay, listen, my family's all farmers. I'm, my dad was a farmer, for God's sake, so I don't have anything against that, but if you're trying to be an urban area, you don't do those sorts of things, you know. So anyway, that's all I'm saying, but, um, and I'm not singling out this group. I want Septemberfest to prove what's going on, too. I think that's what Mr. Dwarnicki told us, is that we have an obligation, and I, I was surprised by the I'd consider a stinging report, and I think we as commissioners now are under the gun. We have to have evidence from these groups 
from the wrestling group, from the, you know, the Ballet Nebraska, from Bemis, from everybody. We have to have proof that they're having people show up. Because that's what the law says. Unless they say, just give money to any organization, then fine, we can just do whatever we please. So I'm not trying to single anybody out. I think everybody has to account. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, and, I, and I couldn't make the meeting. I do have to work. I'm not retired. So I still do stuff. And so I have to be places and I can't do all those things. And that's one reason why I'm not too happy with the committee report, although I do get excellent reports from the county clerk. So um, I wanted to ask a couple questions. Have you raised private funds for this fair? They, uh, I believe, Commissioner, are in process. I can't speak for the Fair Board because I am not an official representative of the okay. Fair Board. I am on the Foundation's perspective of things. I know the Fair Board has been in discussions uh, about raising private funds, not only for the high school rodeo, but for the Fair as well. Yeah. Um, they were um, raising them, if you will, in pencil type of a situation, waiting for today's vote to see if they had the seed money to be able to put on the Fair then to complement with private funded dollars. Uh, is my understanding for things, um, but a as I mentioned before, I'm about three weeks into this uh, particular role, so um, I'm getting up to speed myself, sir. Well, I, and I appreciate your report. Uh, I wish I ha could have been there uh, for the committee report, but uh, I, I can't make all of these reports. It's just it's a fact of life. But I do get the reports and I read them, uh, particularly from uh, Commissioner Cavanaugh's committee. But let me try to wind this down. Uh, I. Uh, uh, I want accountability from everybody who gets money. That's what I'm after. And uh, whatever it takes, we're going to have to maybe invest money into it. Maybe we're going to have to have spot checks. I don't know. But we have an, we have an obligation to do what our auditor told us to do. And um, uh, one final thing about Ralston, each of not here, but I took a Statue of Liberty out of our condo one time and put it in the back of a Cadillac convertible. And it was the coolest thing driving up that big pack up the street that people were standing up putting their hands on their hearts as the statue. It was very cool. So Ralston is a place to be, that's for sure. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, uh, let's hope that we can get some accountability and then we'll be on the right track. And I mean accountability from everybody. And um, I'm sorry I talked so much today, Mark. <laughs> Commissioner Kraft. Yeah. Um, just regarding the use of the Douglas County name. Oh, Matt, did you have anything you wanted to add? No. <laughs> I'm not Thank you. Good, good judgment. Too. Very, Thank very, you. Very well I've said. I've been to enough of these meetings over the years. <laughs> very, very well I, said. I respect the commissioner's time. Less is better. Thank you. Um, regarding the use of the name Douglas County, we also have the Douglas County Chamber of Commerce. We have the Douglas County Republicans, the Douglas County Democrats. We have Omaha Steaks, Omaha Chamber of Commerce. It, it's not our name is our it's our name but it's also a generic area determination uh, or maybe I shouldn't say generic specific area determination that is in the public domain so they can use it I, and that's all I have to say at the moment thank you Commissioner Morgan Matt yes, just want to thank you I attended that uh, meeting committee meeting you had mark and i thought it was very informative and i also appreciated very much your passion about doing this right i mean that i talked to mark after the meeting uh and it was really good thank so you thank you the the only um thing i want to say about the urban versus rural type they're trying to blend the two from a commissioner who has rural areas still within her district, um, there's still people that are very proud of the agricultural background that they have and still have today. And so us being able to use um, a venue to um, showcase that and talk about that and be proud of it, um, I'm all for. So. Blending the two, yes, we're oh. an urban county, but we're also rural, and ag is a very, very, very critical piece, not only of Douglas County, but of, of uh, Nebraska as a whole. So um, we need to embrace that as well. So with that, there has been a motion and a second. Um, and Madam Chair, to clarify the, the money for the College Hall of Fame is motion is the earmark to the OCBB? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Thank you. So please vote. This includes the Walton 
Yep. Yep. Our rules. So well, right, you vote. have to be present. Yes. Commissioner Morgan. Motion passes. Criminal Justice Committee, there are a couple items here. The first amendment of the Medical Director Medical Professional Service contract. David Slater is here if we have any questions on this. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. A motion by Commissioner Boyle, seconded by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. Yes. Oh, wrong one. Apologize, Commissioners. Uh huh. We can just do a roll call on the first one if you want. Her fingers are. Right. Okay. okay. That, sorry, Commissioner. Thank all right. you. That's all right. Nothing hurt. <laughs> okay. Motion passes. The next resolution is to approve and accept the 2017 Douglas County Supplement to the Washington County Radiologic Emergency Response Plan. And Paul Johnson is here if there are any questions, but is there a motion to approve? So move. Second. Motion by Commissioner Boyle, second by Commissioner Duda. Please vote. Motion passes. The last one is a resolution to approve and accept the Regional Homeland Security Program Memorandum of Understanding. There is $6,996 that is budgeted. Paul Johnson is here from uh, as our emergency manager. If there are any questions, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. It's a very small part of the whole budget. Okay. Yes. 6996 $6 um, motion by Commissioner Boyle, seconded by Commissioner Kraft. Please vote. Yes. Motion passes. Um, human resources, the weekly personnel report from civil service as um, presented. Um, unless there are questions or comments, um, no legislative items. Um, at this juncture, we do not have an executive session. Surprise! Today. Well, and so, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, point, point of privilege. privilege. Yes, point of privilege. I have something I want to show you about uh, someone that gave me lessons and uh, direction. I maybe have the picture put up, Chris. You'll like this. Not sure you'll recognize the young man on my uh. left. <laughs> that was giving me instructions of what I should do with my life. He doesn't see it yet. I can't see who that is. It's you. Uh, on the left? <laughs> I can't see it. You got my glasses? So I told him what? <laughs> I, I gave you how to... Gave me directions there you go. and... Oh, is that right? Directed oh, my future. Right. There we go. <laughs> I have must have been, a, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Must have been at a Boy Scout meeting or something. <laughs> No, that's a... There you go. Wow. He was telling me, here's what you should do with your life and so on. And yes, I was speak up for things you believe in. That's right. The fair board. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think that's what he was in the I, found, <laughs> I found that picture quite a while ago, a few months ago, just in some papers, and I thought I got to bring <laughs> it there for mine. That's fabulous. That's that's anyway. Yes. You know, uh, it could be back in, uh, I'm thinking it could have been 81, 82. You know, the pen. What do you think? Well, you know, there's a blue pen I think I've got on my, on my <laughs> shirt. And I think, I think that was actually during the recall, loyal to Boyle is what that said, I think. So I, this was, and PJ uh, was on the uh, supporting me in that recall effort, so I think that may be what it was. I'm not sure. Wow. <clears throat> anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that a little. 
Thanks. That's you cool. Were not Sorry to be so so uh, blind that I couldn't see it was me. I thought, who is that? All right. Thank all you. Right, a motion thanks. to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is thank second. you all for Please having vote. Morgan here. Was she second. was cute. Uh, second by Commissioner Kraft. Thank you. It doesn't. For us, it does. <laughs> okay. There you have it. Commissioner uh, Boyle. Nick, Mr. Cavanaugh, sorry. Cavanaugh's not here. There he is. Motion passes.